Donald Trump's daughter-in-law and co-chair of the RNC, Laura Trump, was on Fox News last night running her mouth about the Bidens on the day Hunter Biden was found guilty of multiple felonies. She thought she was going to paint a picture of how terrible the Bidens are, but all she did was end up making Donald Trump look awful and reminding the American people about some things that Donald Trump was hoping they had forgotten about. Just wait until you see Laura Trump fall flat on her face in this clip. Donald Trump is going to be pissed. But before I show you that, I have to play this short clip of Laura Trump engaging in this new conspiracy theory that these charges against Hunter were just a distraction. Watch this. He knows what this trial with Hunter Biden was about. This is about smoke and mirrors. This is the red herring. This is a distraction from what you've talked about the entire show, which is that it's not just criminality we're worried about with the Biden family. It's national security we're concerned about. We need to know as American citizens that when Joe Biden, as president of the United States, is making decisions for this country, he's made decisions based on what's best for the American people and not what's best for the bank account of the Biden family. Holy projection, Batman. So this has been the right wing talking point for the last 24 hours that Hunter Biden's convictions are actually bad because it's just being used as a distraction so the real crimes of the Biden family don't have to be prosecuted. And Laura Trump wasn't even the craziest person when it came to this conspiracy theory. Look at what Newsmax put on TV last night. Today was merely a distraction. It should be very obvious to you, a ploy to protect the Biden family from the really serious stuff. Here's a gun charge. You're never going to end up in jail because dad's president. We've got to get the stink of this off of us. We got to make people believe in the DOJ, even though we've manipulated and politicized it. The influence peddling of the most corrupt political family in American history is the real story. That's what we really should be talking about. This gun stuff is nonsense. It makes no difference whatsoever. And this little tax thing coming is the same thing. After engaging in some conspiracy theories, Laura Trump decided to really put her foot in her mouth and listen to what she told Hannity's audience next. I guarantee Donald Trump called her up after this and said, what are you doing? Don't say those things. It's kind of wild for me to watch. If you think back, Sean, to when Donald Trump won the election in 2016, think about what our family business was. We were a private company that had real estate and golf courses around the world. We were in international business originally, yet what did we do? We said, you know what, when he won, we're not going to do any new international business deals. The opposite of that happened when Joe Biden became vice president of the United States. So there is zero proof that Joe Biden was involved in any international business dealings when he was vice president. All the charges that the Republicans make are about Hunter Biden and his personal business dealings during that time, and even mostly when Joe Biden was a private citizen in 2017 and 2018. That's when a lot of that stuff went down. But that being said, if the Republican Party had some sort of evidence that connected vice, then Vice President Joe Biden to anything corrupt or illegal, they would have already brought it up and impeached him in the House of Representatives. They're dying to do that, but they haven't done so because they don't have the votes even among the Republicans in the House due to not providing any evidence that Pre Vice President Joe Biden did anything, let alone President Joe Biden. But Laura Trump steps into a giant pile here because she reminds the American people about just how corrupt the Trump family is. This idea that they didn't enter into any new international business dealings while Trump was president is nonsense. Everybody knows about Ivanka Trump's patents in China. Again, we know about Jared Kushner's $2 billion investments that he received from the Saudis just months after leaving the White House. Clearly, that was a deal in the works while he was still there. So touting that they didn't enter into any international business dealings is most likely a lie and it's just going to shine a giant spotlight on this and get people start digging through the records and I guarantee you're going to start to see some stories coming out coming out reminding people about just what the Trump family was involved in when Donald Trump was president. That's when the Biden family got into international business. We went so far as a family as to pay back the United States Treasury every penny that we got from 
any foreign dignitary that spent money at a Trump property. Of course, we got no credit for that, but we didn't even want the faintest hint of impropriety. And yet, look at the way they have gone after Donald Trump for literally anything they could find. I haven't seen any evidence that the Trump family paid back the U.S. Treasury for funds received from foreign dignitaries while Donald Trump was president. That's another thing that people are going to start to dig into and look look at and discover, oh, Laura Trump is full of it and she's lying. There's If that was something that happened, you know that Donald Trump and the family would be parading that around ad nauseum. They also love to tell us that Donald Trump never took a penny of his paycheck when he was president, right? How many Trump supporters have you heard? Heard say that line. Donald Trump didn't take a dollar when he was president. He sacrificed everything for this country. Well, when his tax turns were finally forced to be released after the Democrats doggedly pursued them, and years later, after he was gone, we finally got our hands on them, it showed that in his last year as president, there's no evidence that he actually donated his salary. So he probably even lied about that. Listening to Lara Trump on Fox News last night reminded me of a couple other corrupt business dealings of Donald Trump's administration. Remember that hotel in D.C. that he owned? That was a common watering hole for people, especially Republicans, to come hang out at while he was president and hold events at the hotel, all to curry favor with the Trump administration. Well, he sold that as soon as he left office. Surprise, surprise. And what about the Chinese bank that leased millions of dollars of office space in Trump Tower. They signed an extension before Trump lost re-election, and then they broke their lease, taking their millions of dollars of office space somewhere else as soon as he wasn't useful to them anymore. If those aren't two glaring examples of corruption, then I don't know what is. So thank you, Lara Trump, for going on national television and once again making the Trump family look terrible, reminding the American people about just how corrupt the Trump administration was and what people can look forward to if Donald Trump were to somehow, by some miracle, be reelected and put back in the White House. I think Laura Trump is doing a brilliant job at destroying Donald Trump's chances of being reelected and taking down the entire Republican Party with her.